Hello, are you out there? This is Mark with Homebrew Fever Dreams Reviews, and we've got a brand new one here. My staff, based on a card from Yu-Gi-Oh! Staff of the Invoked. So this is coming from Hot Army. Thank you so much for sharing this. Staff of the Invoked can be attuned by only clerics, paladins, and warlocks. Now, it, the Paladin and Warlocks are relevant because we've got some Charisma saves based on this. And honestly, for Clerics, uh, I think Charisma is kind of like the secondary stat, right? Wisdom, Constitution, Charisma. So, this staff has five charges. While attuned to this staff, make a DC 14 Charisma saving throw. When failed, your body will be taken over for 44 days by the last person whom attuned to this item, if they're dead, if not the one before them, if they're dead. So essentially, this staff has been around for a really long time, and some of the people who've attuned to the staff over the ages are now dead. The most recent one to be dead will possess your body. It's kind of mental. Now, this is an item that you might not want to put in the hands of your players, but for a big bad or a, a mini boss in the middle of an adventure, this is a powerful item with some really special abilities. So let's get into it here. Uh, one charge can be used to summon an invoked skeleton whom is under your control. Two charges for an invoked zombie Three charges for an invoked withering troll. Powerful? <laughs> yeah, you're starting to get pretty beefy here. Four charges for an invoked vampire, which would be uh, out of the rulebook of vampire spawn. Five charges for an invoked minotaur skeleton, which is kind of cool because it kind of is reminiscent of some of the, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, a lot of it, the creatures that are invoked have a very undead feel to them. Um, was it? Alistair Crowley, uh, I don't think the last name's Crowley, but uh, is an occultist. <laughs> but Alistair is the character who, who runs the invoked little critters. I don't know that much about Yu-Gi-Oh, but the staff charges recharge every week. So I want to just point out a quick critique here, just something that I think you should put in. Hot Army. Currently, you're saying while attuned to the staff, make the DC-14 Christmas saving throw. You don't say when you attune, you say while you're attuned, which is important because these invoked creatures build up. They don't go away. So ultimately, every single week, uh, the, the person, the player or, or NPC in control of the staff is going to gain more and more invoked characters. So I think because you recharge all the charges weekly... Uh, or you can make it a 10 day, every seven days, every 10 days, whatever uh, the theme for your role play world is DMs out there. I would make that DC 14 charisma save also when the recharges pop. So on a weekly or 10 day basis, you have to resave over and over. Now, a 14 is not too high, especially for a charisma based character, but you're only going to get so many weeks while you are the one in control of the staff. Uh, or you get possessed by a long-dead former uh, possessor of the staff. So, invoked monsters summoned are there until death. And that's really the big part of this, is that it does allow the controller of the staff, the attuned to the staff, to build up an army of essentially of the undead. Uh, so I don't know how closely that relates to the theme from Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know that they're undead creatures in Yu-Gi-Oh, but uh, I, I think they're more tied to like their elemental attributes, whatever. <laughs> but with this, it's undead, which is it, it ties in nicely with the theme of D&D 5e. So I, I appreciate that, that adjustment to that. Um, once per month, target one creature... That creature makes a DC 17 charisma saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is under your control for one week <laughs> before becoming a lesser invoked. Yeah, creature name, whatever the creature is. Uh, permanently. So, 
on a successful save, they just take 1d12 psychic damage. So if they save, they just get like a little mind blast. You only get to use this special ability once a month. I, because that DC 17 charisma save is pretty high, it's going to work on a lot of creatures or characters, NPCs in the game. So I would put a special limiter in here that it's only going to work on a creature with HP hit points less than 20 or you know 50 or something like that. Uh, think of a uh, power word kill. I think it only is effective against creatures with less than 100 hit points. So you can't just power word kill a level 15, you know, barbarian and just kill him. You have to get their HP below that. So because of how powerful the staff is, like say you gave the staff to your big bad, you wouldn't want the big bad just zapping control of the, the, the PCs, the player characters in the party. That would kind of suck. So I would say that ultimately the big bad has to get their health down to a certain point, maybe even like 20 hit points, you know, something pretty low. Um, and it's kind of like, yeah, you're weakening them before you can capture them, control them. Uh, I, I would add that on there just for a bit of balance. Um, because ultimately if you are giving this to a big bad and they grab one of the control of one of the PCs, I could see the party members really not liking that. Now, what I do like, again, this is such a well-designed item, is that the creature is under the control of the wielder for one week before becoming a lesser invoked, because that is a plot hook. So you have an item here that is wielded most likely by the big bad, that if one of the PCs gets controlled, the party has a week of game time to try and essentially wrest the staff, the staff of the invoked from this big bad to save their friend, their comrade. Or if you don't want to take control of a PC altogether, have the staff of the invoked control one of the NPCs very close to one of the, the players, or one of the, the uh, party members, you know, a, a brother, a wife, uh, you know, something like that. And now you have a, a motivation for the party to, to within a one week period, uh, take this big bad out, rest control of the staff of the invoked. Otherwise, that person becomes a lesser invoked permanently. So all that means is they become one of the shambling, uh, I, I won't say they're undead, but they do become enthralled to the, the user and join the army of other undead out there. Now, We've got a nice diagram. This is the Staff of the Invoked from uh, pretty much every Yu-Gi-Oh card where Alistair is on there. Uh, lesser Invoked monsters have half HP and AC. So that's a nice little balance. It's kind of turning down the power of the staff. So if, you, if, if, if this person were to like capture a really powerful or beefy, like say a dragon, right? You could use the staff on a dragon. Now you've got a dragon on your side. It's like saying, eh, your army is only going to be so powerful. We're going to half the AC, half the HP of that creature. And now it's much easier to take down those threats when they're presented in mass as an army or at least a squadron of, of invoked controlled uh, creatures. And also um, invoked monsters are immune to mind control Oh, 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 and have double health points. So fully invoked creatures, uh, monsters. Uh, these are the ones up here. So the Minotaur skeleton, the vampire spawn. So what you're saying is that, yeah, you can't just like undead, control undead or charm or anything else to gain control, rest them away from the controller of the staff of the invoker. Whoever has the staff of the invoked, not the invoker, has full control over these creatures. You cannot wrest control away from them. You couldn't just get um, a, a, a school of wizards and, and, and 10 of the wizards from the local city come and just pluck away the vampire spawn and the minotaurs away from the wielder of the staff and thus strip them of their army. Mm -mm, that's not going to work. You cannot wrest control away. That's very well thought out. And I do like just the fact of doubling the hit points. It's a simple way to just be like, yeah, these things are like, mind-controlled meat shields. It's not doubling their hit or their damage or their AC. They're still as easy to, to hit as ever, and they're not any more dangerous per se as far as melee combat or anything like that, but they have a lot of hit points. Uh, so listen, the 
it, it's an all-in-one item. I mean, you put this item in your game, you've got an entire story wrapped around it. So it's rare to see an item that is that complete. So uh, Hot Army, thank you so much for sharing. Um, quick critique on the presentation. I would think about inking, inking like as in, you know, fine point. These are Sharpies. Maybe you don't want to use a Sharpie, but a nice fine point uh, or even a colored pencil so that once you go over, once you've written it out, you've done your art, you're satisfied with it, go over and trace out every single word, your entire piece of art. In comic books, that's what they do. I don't know if you know this hot army, but, or anyone else. A comic book artist, there's pencilers who are the ones that are drawing Spider-Man and the scenes, and they're literally using it like a pencil, sketching it all out, getting the shape of everything, all the action moves. And then an inker comes in after them, not the same person in most cases. There's a professional penciler and there's a professional inker. That is an actual job out there. And they go in with, and, and they reinforce the lines. Some of them bolder, some of them thinner, and it really brings a comic book to life. It makes it pop. So I would encourage you, Hot Army, as you work on your projects, uh, it, again, this is just a touch of advice. Maybe you could even reach out to Warrior Button on how they do it. But, you, you know, I know with Warrior Button's artwork, you see how even his lettering, he traces over, uh, or they, and it really makes it pop. I only say that because the contrast on your submission here is a little tough to see with the two tones. Uh, it, certainly it's readable when it's blown up and stuff, but it would really make this just look, bam, it just makes it... It's permanent, like you're really bringing it to life. And you'll probably notice with Warrior Buttons, are every now and again, they'll do like a, a misspelling or have to do a rewrite. And on there, they'll just, they'll black out like the whole word. Because, you know, a lot of Warrior button stuff is like done in very permanent, like ink. There's no do-overs. You just, so commit. And I think it'll just bring your stuff to life. Uh, especially I could see with the Staff of the Invoked artwork here. If you were to, trace that out in a nice, whether it's colored or just black and white doesn't matter, but it would just, bam, make it pop. So um, I think for balance, I, I mentioned a couple things I think you need to bring in for balance. I think for theme, it's an A plus product. I mean, it's absolutely something of a malevolent necromancer would have in a game world. So I think it's all there. I think ease of understanding, yeah. I think it's relatively clear. It, it, it's interesting, this, as I read through it, I was like, well, what does that mean? But ultimately, you very specifically say, listen, it's permanent effect. It doesn't, so there's no like, well, how long, how many? It's like, as many as they can do. But you counterbalance the idea of, of some big bad making this army by saying, listen, you have to make that wisdom check, presumably, or sorry, charisma check of DC 14, or you will become possessed by the last possessor of the staff. So for anyone who wields the Staff of the Invoked, there's that constant threat that they will become subsumed by the, 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 uh, the, the dead people from before them. Everyone becomes a victim of the Staff eventually. So it's just like, whew. Um, yeah, you've got your theme. We talked about balance. Uh, we talked about fun. I don't know that you can give this to a player. This would be like Hand of Vecna level. <laughs> It's that powerful, but subtle and low key. It doesn't buff a single stat of the wielder. It's just, you just get an army of permanent thralls. So I love it. Thank you so much. Um, anyone who watched, uh, let's give Hot Army. Can we get some thumbs up for them? Maybe maybe some, uh, some comments and some takes. This is their first submission here with us. So for their sake, not for mine, you guys know I don't give a cred. <laughs> so, but... Uh, Really well done. Thank you.